when the sequel came out, shit. What happens when you mix a racing stage with a water lamp? But Hi fellas, Leo's here. Yeah, I got diagnosed with that. You know what's worse than being forced to do something? Being forced to do something while you're doing it. Nah, it's good that. We all have those pet peeves when it comes to games, underwater levels, escort missions, playing it. But by far, one of my biggest annoyances is the auto scrolling stage. I believe my first experience with this depraved monstrosities was for Super Mario Bros. 3. Thankfully, there's not that many of them, but man, there's a reason why I didn't completely beat these games when I was younger. It's hard to keep people invested for long, just your average auto scroll can be. Those stages just take longer than necessary. You cannot predict where some enemies might pop up and god forbid you fall and die because back to the beginning. And for some reason they're always pitfall stages. It was like the singularity for terrible game design where all bad decisions go to die. Like college. As another example, a game that I loved as a kid, Asterix. Anyone remember Asterix? Yeah, I know. Not if you're from the US, but we got the animated movies in Latin America for some reason, and with it, the SNES game made by Infogrames. You all remember Infogrames, right? Try copyright, failed, tried again, got bought out. They mostly focus on European comic series like the Smurfs, Tintin, and Asterix, of course. This first game was great, a little basic, really small hitboxes, but I enjoy every time it clapped my ass. Boy, this game is tough! And only on the second level we get another of the biggest enemies in gaming. Even though it's, you know, snow. That's not how it works. And add to that the side scrolling stage. Yes, the one stage that had to move by itself and it has a goddamn slippery movement. And the worst part, the camera is hungry. Yeah, you die if you don't move fast enough, so you're screwed either way. I mean, the rest of the game isn't easy either, but this part of the game took me like a decade to get past. And to make matters worse, the second to last stage is also a damn auto scroller. At this point, they're just throwing everything at you so you cannot finish the stupid game. It's almost like they also have rentals in Europe or something. Oh, never mind. Overall, this epidemic of auto scrollers seem to stay mostly on platformers and kind of with beat em ups if you think about it. After all, the game doesn't move until you're done murdering people. But of course, the main culprit was the shoot em ups. Yes, one of my favorite genres. But in this case, I say that this genre is built around the auto scrolling system with enemies coming from set parts so you can memorize it and try again. So this is the one case that I accept the camera moving at its own pace. This is just plain stupid. Okay, let's have this platformer slash beat em up with auto scrolling levels. That's bad enough, but let's also have these parts where if you take too long, you get squished. I understand dying if you take too long, but when you add enemies that take too many hits to just waste time so the only sensible option is to run through, get hit and hope that the invincibility frames help you get to the top, that's just bad game design. And it's funny, when you think about it, scrolling stages sort of disappear from gaming consciousness for a while, only popping up with a few games every once in a while. But if you really think, they never left. You know those games where you had to shimmy around the ledge to get to the next area or walk with an NPC to listen to their exposition? That's basically an auto-scroller. Sure, it's not moving slowly, but it's making you move at its own pace. Maybe to load the rest of the stage or just making the scene last longer. But isn't that what an auto-scroller is? Just making that part of the game longer? But with the latest generation of consoles, loading has become basically a thing of the past. They just load the first part booting up and then blam, smooth sail from there. So yeah, enough with the negativity, why don't you mention something good about the auto scroller? Hmm. Oh, how about the world shooter? I mean, they technically apply, you move it at the game's pace, you can move and shoot, sometimes cover, and blast everything on screen. It's basically a prelude to the FPS and the like, but I don't know, I guess I'm a big fan of these kind of tough as nails games, like Wild Guns for example. I've only beat it once, but the music, the controls, and the graphics just make it worth playing, especially with a friend. Well, if you too can afford it. Yes, another big thing of the video game price bubble, not that many copies exist in the... the wild. Woo! So even if you go for a Super Famicom version, it's still gonna be pricey because it's easy to play. There's no story to be missed otherwise, so you might wanna go for the sequel instead. Nintendo finally realized, oh sh**, the game's good. And there was just about one way to play it, so why not profit from that? Wild Guns Reloaded came out April 17, 2018 for the Switch with additional characters and improved visuals. Pretty much just a better version of the original without shelling out JESUS CHRIST to play it. Now, speaking of rail shooters... I don't wanna die! My god. Please, help him! <laughs> there was nothing we could do. <laughs> What is it? Should 
Natural History Museum! It's perfect! These type of games are mostly reserved for arcades because of the guns that they use, but thankfully game consoles include some sort of concoction to play at home with, if you can. Sadly, these type of zappers only work for old school CRT TVs, so if you only have flat screens at home, well it's either we or bust. Another type of shooting games are the ones like Space Harry on the Genesis or Star Fox on everything except the Wii. You move your character around the screen, shooting at enemies, avoiding projectiles and getting power-ups. It's just a straight up a great time, especially when you move about 10 FPS. This type of genre was even adapted to series that had no business with space shooters like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, they got the ship missions. I mean, yeah, they're kinda cute in the first game, but when the sequel came out, shit. You can even turn the camera, customize your ship, and go for the highest score. I mean, this is a whole different game within KH2, and it gotta expand on the third game where it's just mostly open areas, but you can get into a smaller while shooting sections and fight bosses. No joke, I spent so many hours with this section alone, I platinum 2 because I got all the trophies in the gummy section, and I was like, f*** it, might as well! Going back to platformers, some of them wanted to include some sort of racing stage. Some of the ones that come to mind are from Donkey Kong Country. Cool, right? The best ones obviously coming from the second game, with the time limit gimmick where you had to hit the correct barrels, otherwise you get caught by the ghost, it's great! And sure, these are nice and all, but what happens when you mix a racing stage with a water lamp? What? Remove the water! So after all that, what makes a good autoscroller? Well, it has to be fun for one. Yikes. But also don't make the player feel that they're moving slower than usual. Hell, make it so they move as fast as possible so they need to react to enemy placement and incoming attacks. They should also be able to move freely if possible so nice as power-ups and horrible man and just terrible voice acting. That's a good question. The energy immediately, Mega Man. We may be, 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 be. And congratulations! Your fast paced auto scroller with fun power ups and gimmicks and sporting a banging soundtrack will become a successful cult classic in 10 to 20 years!